the raw tree sharpener that's built into Sharpener Pro 3.0 is a really powerful sharpening tool. Uh, I find myself really only using it when I need to uh, selectively sharpen a particular area of an image. Uh, and this is a this is a situation where I might need to do that, this Ithaca Falls sign. And um, before I go into the Nick collection, and really before I do almost anything except maybe noise reduction, uh, I want to make sure that my sharpening in whatever raw processor that I'm using is off. Because what we're going to do is replace the raw pre-sharpening that's occurring in your raw software, your raw processing software, with uh, Sharpener Pro's raw pre-sharpener. So, um, in, and again, generally, I wouldn't, I don't use the raw pre-sharpener only when I need to selectively uh, do raw pre-sharpening, and I want to utilize control points for that. So this is a great situation. Um, in fact, I'll just zoom in a couple times here. So we'll zoom into 100%. You can see there's this photograph has this very short depth of field. The back of the sign is in focus, but the front of the sign and the text isn't totally sharp. And this becomes you know, totally apparent when looking at type, when looking at text. So I do want to sharpen this, and I want to start it out sort of in the beginning of the workflow. Um, and I will point out there are three sort of phases of sharpening, but we'll talk about those three phases of sharpening after we look at the uh, pre-sharpener. So in Photolab, I'm going to turn off the lens sharpness algorithm. So I'm in the details section over on the right side of the interface, and I'm just going to go ahead and just click lens sharpness off because we're going to replace that lens sharpness tool with the raw pre-sharpener. So uh, to access the raw pre-sharpener from Photolab, you would go into uh, the Nick Collection button that you find in the lower right corner of the interface. Um, I do want to change a setting because I, I actually set up my software for output sharpening, and I want to make sure that my settings, that the image that we're um, utilizing right now, um, is set properly. So I'm going to turn off my settings. And um, yeah, so I'm resizing my photo right now, and I don't want to do that. So uh, I'm going to click cancel for just a second. So the plugin selector, this is where you'd usually access the NIC plugins from uh, the uh, Photo Lab software. And when you click on the settings button, a couple options come up. I'm going to recommend that if you're going to be doing post processing, which a lot of folks are probably interested in doing that as you're sitting in on this webinar right now, um, to, to stick with the TIFF as an export and stick with the 16-bit as an export while doing the post-processing. Um, what you'll end up with is a, a higher quality set of edits um, because we're duplicating our raw file as a TIFF file here. Um, I'm not too concerned about resolution. I actually want to turn off enable resizing right now because I want the inherent size of my uh, capture to just kind of come into the Sharpener Pro software. And I'm not too terribly concerned with the ICC profile right now. Although if I'm sharpening for web, I might wanna just convert this to sRGB before uh, actually going to web. But that's a, again, a different conversation. It's just that's where this option is here in the, the uh, settings of the plugin selector. So I've turned off the enable resizing. I'm gonna click okay. That should be off by default for you. Um, I just knew that I had turned it on when sort of testing out my images before we started the webinar. And uh, from here, we're just going to go ahead and click on Sharpener Pro Raw Pre-Sharpener. And what's going to happen is our raw file is going to be duplicated into a TIFF file. And we will be able to go into Sharpener Pro Raw Pre-Sharpener. OK, so we're in the raw pre-sharpening software. Here we go. We've got our 16 megapixel file. This was shot with an Olympus camera. It was shot. I want to, if I remember correctly, it was a, a 50 millimeter equivalent, and I was shooting at a very short depth of field. Um, and what that yields us is a uh, very short depth of field in our image where not our whole sign is in focus. Now, I just double clicked to zoom in. It's a nice little shortcut. And uh, again, really, the only time I ever use the raw pre-sharpener personally is when I need to selectively sharpen something in an image. But as soon as we open the software, it automatically does a sharpening effect for us. So I'm going to move into the upper left corner of the interface, click on my split preview. And what you'll note here is on the left is the original image, and on the right is the sharpened image. So if I click on our split preview and I just drag that back and forth, you can see the original non-sharpened image. And then as I move this across, and it's very subtle in this case, 
and it typically should be very subtle. We're not trying to, um, with the raw pre-sharpening global adjustment, we're not trying to sort of sharpen um, to ultimate sharpness because hopefully we did that in camera if possible. Um, what we're trying to do is basically negate um, some anti-aliasing effects and um, some other things that occur when uh, the raw file is converted or is processed from raw into an image format. Long story short, you should get a little bit of sharpening here, and it should look pretty good right off the bat. If you need more or less sharpening globally, you'd move into the adaptive sharpening slider in the upper right corner, and you can increase uh, or you can decrease the adaptive sharpening algorithm. And we're gonna talk about the adaptive sharpening algorithm throughout the uh, demonstration. Uh, it's a smart sharpening tool, and what it wants to do, the, the adaptive sharpening that actually occurs, what it wants to do is look for edges and um, edges of objects and lines and details. It wants to sharpen the things that it deems as needing more sharpening. And where that would fall into play is something like type. It can recognize that this is a hard edge here. It can recognize that this hard edge has a, a certain amount of contrast between here and here. And then this hard edge has less because it's out of focus. So the adaptive sharpening makes an attempt to sharpen these things that are more out of focus than the things that are already pretty much in focus. And the idea is that we can get a better sharpening uh, without over sharpening. Uh, now, moving into the sharpen areas, sharpen edges slider. Uh, basically, if I were to slide the sharpen areas over, the sharpening algorithm is actually avoiding sharpening lines and edges. You can actually see that pretty well around the edge here. Um, and what it's doing is it's taking anything that it deems an area, so it's sort of the opposite of an edge, and we're only sharpening those areas. We probably want to avoid that for the most part. There might be an aesthetic purpose to do that, uh, but whenever I'm using this, I tend to sharpen the edges more. That tends to be the goal to get a more in focus or sharper image is to have the edges be sharper. Um, if your photo has a, an internet amount of noise, uh, you can click on the high noise tool or button here, and uh, that's going to yield you better results in images that have higher noise. Um, for now, I'm actually gonna move back into the upper left corner and just click into my single image view. Let's take a look at the before and after using this preview checkbox here. So as I turn this off, you'll see the before. It's pretty subtle. Hopefully you can see it on your screen. Um, and then the after, which brings it sort of into sharp uh, focus there. Now, if I wanted to increase the sharpening uh, on the edge of our Ithaca, what I would do is move over to the right side of the interface, click the plus button, because we're gonna be able to um, add more sharpening here. And two things are gonna happen when we add this, this, uh, this control point. First of all, the apply entire image slider. Watch what happens. So th right now, this slider basically means we're uh, sharpening the entire image 100% or whatever the adaptive sharpening amount we've told it to sharpen. Um, if I go and add a plus control point on our type here, two things are happening. The first thing that happens is the apply to entire image slider goes to zero, which means we are not sharpening any of the photograph. And that's because when we add this plus control point, the software thinks we only want to sharpen wherever the control point is affected. So in this case, I don't want to do that. But again, a lot of times in my own workflow, I'm really only trying to go after a particular portion of an image to sharpen that back up a little bit um, in, using Sharpener Pro's raw pre-sharpener. So oftentimes I may leave the apply entire image slider down at 0%. For now, for this demo, let's leave it at 100%. Let's go into our control point. We're gonna talk more about control points during the rest of the demonstration. Um, and what I wanna do is increase, I'm gonna decrease the size of the area of influence and then I wanna actually increase the adaptive sharpening slider until I'm happy with just this area over here, right? And that's gonna give us a little bit of extra sharpening. And then what I tend to do here is now I've over sharpened this stuff that's already sharpened, already in focus. So I need to reduce my apply to entire image slider just a little bit. Basically, so now I wanna match uh, the two together as close as I possibly can. And it's getting closer. In fact, if we look at this split preview now, if I slide this over, um, here is an example of the before, and we'll just slide this back, and here's an example of the after, and you can see we're getting some nice sharpening in here. We're not 
bringing the the Ithaca sign tack sharp because it was out of focus. But if we actually zoom out and we click on our split preview or side by side preview rather, um, on the left is the original image and on the right is the sharpened image. And your eye should be attracted just a little bit more towards that image on the right because it has the sharpening applied to it. And you can actually see the I, the T and the H and the Ithaca sign um, is, is a bit sharper. And so your eye is going to be attracted to that that much more. But that's using uh, the raw pre-sharpener from Nick Collection. It's actually as simple as that. The beauty of this software, as I click the save button, is that it, it does all of the work for you. You really just have to um, know kind of how to set up the image before going in and um, uh, using the, the plugin itself. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, operations within Sharpener Pro for printing and for output. And this this is actually where I find myself using Sharpener Pro most of the time, um, both using the output sharpener for printing and then also for many images that I'm going to put online or I send out for client use that they're going to use online. Um, and the, the reason you want to sharpen for printing is because what you see on screen is a is a particular rendering that you're seeing on your monitor, right? And when you convert that to a print, whether it's you're going to you know Walmart or a professional print lab, or you're using your inkjet printer, or wherever you might be printing, um, there's a translation of information. And in all of those print technologies, there is a loss of detail because of the way that the information gets transferred, and then also because of the print technology itself. For example, inkjet printing is uh, literally spraying ink down on paper, right? And so while those liquid drops are being sprayed, um, you know, several million of them per second, uh, they are hitting the paper and they are being absorbed into that paper. And it, upon absorption, the, the ink actually spreads out a little bit. And these printers are absolutely incredible as to what they can do. But the Sharpener Pro software basically sharpens for you the amount that you need based upon the kind of printer that you're using and based upon the resolution of the image that you're printing, right? So here we've got this photograph of Ellie. And uh, I've done a little bit of post-processing on the picture, just a little. I actually, I think I want to reduce the contrast a little bit more. But uh, if you look, when I shot this photo, we're zoomed into 100% now. When I shot this photo, I was back focused just a little bit. And it's an exceedingly short depth of field. But this was my favorite one of the series. I just missed her eyes. So I want to sharpen her eyes. And I want to sharpen this for a print. And I want to give this print away to uh, Ellie's grandmother. So what we're going to do, and just to kind of have a little conversation about when you'd use the Sharpener Pro, is you would do all of the post-processing that you want to do. So you make your white balance adjustments, you know, use all of your contrast adjustments, local adjustments, convert it to black and white with silver effects or utilize color effects in however, you know, however you like to or create your HDR image. Basically, you do all of the post processing. And then when you're ready to output for a specific output, in this case, to print, um, there, there are a few things that you need to do. First of all, you have to know how you're going to be printing it and you have to tell the sharpening software how it's going to be printed. And then you also need to size the image before bringing it into Sharpener Pro, ideally. So here's how you do that. We've got our image. We've finished the post-processing on it. We're going to click on the Nick collection in the lower right corner button there. And then you're going to go into those settings that I just told you about. So in the settings section here, um, we are going to stick with that process as a TIFF file at 16-bit, because we're still going to be doing some post-processing. And then what we're going to do is enable resizing. And in this case, uh, I want to, I've, I've already cropped the image 8 by 10, so it'll fit in a, in a nice standard size frame. Um, we're going to go to inches, because that's what's going to make sense for me here with this 8 by 10 inch frame. Um, and I'm going to go to largest size, and I'm going to set that to the largest size. So it's 10 inches tall. Uh, my interpolation is how the image is going to be resized. Now, because I'm going to be sharpening it with Sharpener Pro 3, I'm, I'm going to avoid bicubic sharper. I'm going to use bicubic. That's going to help yield uh, softer and hopefully more just nicer transitions. Um, 
but it's not going to sharpen or it's going to attempt to not sharpen as it inter interpolates. Um, and I'm going to leave the Adobe 1998 uh, because I'm going to be printing on inkjet and it will be able to handle that color space in this, in this case. So I'll click OK. Once I've set those, now I click into Sharpener Pro's output sharpener. Um, and so what we're going to get here is Sharpener Pro is going to open and it's going to have an image that's eight by 10 in inches, right? And so this original RAW file um, was not eight by 10 inches. It's, it was shot with a, a Nikon D850, which is something like 45 megapixels. It's a massive file. And I do not want to sharpen with that massive file if I know I'm going to be printing it at a different size than its inherent file size. So the, the key here, um, aside from knowing what kind of printer you're going to be using, is to know uh, the size that you're going to be printing so that the software can sharpen it for you properly. So we're in the output sharpener here. You go up to the uh, output sharpening checkbox or, or sorry, drop down menu in the upper right corner, and you have to choose the kind of technology that you're going to utilize. In this case, we're going to print using an inkjet printer. Um, and But just as a caveat or a little sort of side note, if you're going to send off to a professional lab, um, some labs are going to use a continuous tone printer. That's an actual photographic printer, like a Lambda machine or um, a mini lab or some sort of uh, photographic material uh, that is going to go through chemistry. That's going to be a continuous tone style printer. Um, and then some professional printers are using inkjet printers. Um, and so if you're not printing at home, and you are going to be sending your images off, you, you do want to ask those questions or look at the FAQ of whatever lab or organization you're using for making your prints. So I'm gonna click on inkjet. Uh, once, once we've clicked on the correct kind of output sharpening that we need, uh, you just have to answer a couple questions and then it actually sharpens for you. And that's the beauty of the output sharpener. It's the beauty of Sharpener Pro 3.0 is it, it takes the guesswork out of sharpening. It just does it for you and it gives you the proper amount of sharpening. Uh, one thing that we're gonna notice when we zoom into this photo here, is it's going to look a little bit over sharpened once we've set our settings um, and that's going to be okay because it might look a little over sharpened on screen but it's going to be the correct amount of sharpening for this particular print and print technology so um, viewing distance back onto the right side of the interface here i'm going to leave this set on auto on the far right side you can choose the viewing distance the only time you would do that is if you know the exact viewing distance your viewer will be standing away from your images your prints Auto, it actually utilizes a particular algorithm that's based on human vision, which is something like 1.5 times the diagonal of the image itself, and it does some math, and you don't have to worry too much about it at this point because it does it for you. So uh, then you go into paper type. You do need to choose the paper type that you're going to be utilizing. Um, with an inkjet printer, ink is going to absorb differently into a canvas than it would into a matte paper or from matte to luster or luster to glossy. So you need a different amount of sharpening. In this case, uh, my, I'm gonna have it printed as a luster. So I'm gonna choose luster, and then I'm gonna go into my printer resolution. And I just need to choose the correct printer resolution for the printer that I'll be utilizing. So in this case, I'll be using my Epson um, with R800, and that has a pixel dimension of 2880 by 1440 per inch. So I'll click on that. And once you've set those three settings for inkjet, you actually have the correct amount of sharpening for the image. Now, I'm gonna hold the space bar. This, this is a shortcut cut for getting the hand tool. And uh, you can see that in the high frequency areas, like here uh, on your hair, that's where it's going to, you're gonna notice the most amount of sharpening uh, because it was already sharp. But what we're looking at right now, as I've clicked on a split preview, here is the before, and there's the after. And this is actually the correct amount of sharpening for this image being printed at eight by 10 off of my inkjet printer. Now, the problem that I'm seeing right now though, is uh, her eyes aren't totally in focus. And this is a problem of me taking the picture in this series of images, right? I, I like this picture. I'm shooting at F2.2. It's very narrow depth of field. I missed focus. Um, it's okay at eight by 10. If I needed to make a giant blow up of this, I'm not sure if I'd be able to do a whole lot, at least without these control points. So here on the right side of the interface, I'm gonna click or uh, just 
skip completely over the creative sharpening and go directly into control points here because this is like the, the creme de la creme of, of sharpening here. So I'm gonna click the add control point button. Her eyes are a little bit out of focus. So what I wanna do is drop this control point and what that point is doing is it's looking for the object that we place it on. It's looking for the similar tone, color, and texture. And it looks for the edges and the um, lines around the, uh, the area that's inside of that circle. It is not making a circular selection, but rather making a selection inside of the circle of those similar tones, colors, and textures. Each control point um, starts out with two sliders. One is the area of influence size slider. And then the other is going to be your output sharpening slider. And there's actually a little triangle. It's hard to see because of the placement of the control point there. There's a little um, expand collapse box here, that little triangle there. And when you click on it, it actually opens up into structure, local contrast, and focus. And what I need to do is just increase my output sharpening. And then watch what happens as I increase focus. So this is a really neat tool. Um, if I bring it way up, I think it's going to go too far. Um, and actually let's increase a little local contrast and a little structure. And I, I think I've taken it too far, but if you look at the difference between this eye and that eye, we've basically got that back in focus, right? So there's the before, give that a second. There's the after. I've done too much. It's gonna be noticeable. If we zoom out, you'd be able to see that I've added, you know, way more focus than we need and um, maybe a little bit too much local contrast. But this is a way to basically save an image um, that maybe you're not terribly happy with the technical uh, aspect of, or in this case, you know, this was my favorite image of the series. I missed the focus, but I wanna be able to utilize the picture. So what I've done is added that control point into um, her left eye, so camera right, and then I actually just duplicated that control point. And just so that you can see how to do that, you can see the point is on her eye, I'm gonna hold the option key down on my Mac or Alt if I'm on a PC, click on my control point and drag it away. So it's option, click and drag. And then I just wanna make sure that I put the control point um, on a and sort of an average color and tone in her eye. Uh, if I place it like you know on her, on her forehead or something like that, I'm not gonna be sharpening her eye. The control point is going to look for that skin tone that's inside of that circle and it's gonna to attempt to sharpen that. You, you could in fact do that if necessary, in this case, I don't. I wanna, I wanna keep her skin nice and soft and smooth. It's kind of nice that it's actually had a focus a little bit, um, but I do wanna retain whatever detail I can in her eyes. Um, just taking a look at the split preview now. Sorry, this is a side-by-side -side preview. On the left is the original image, on the right is the enhanced image. And if I double click to zoom out, I can, I can almost guarantee that your eye is going to be pulled towards the image on the right because uh, the sharpening is being applied to the entire image. And then we've also increased the sharpening on her eyes. It's subtle here. You don't really see it until you zoom in, um, but that's gonna make all the difference from a decent photographic print to a really strong photographic print, right? You've got a good photo, you've got great composition, you've got good exposure, you've got nice post-processing and so on. The next step uh, is to sharpen it properly for output so that the whole thing can shine based upon however you're going to show the image. And granted, it can be a little bit more work to have to sharpen specifically for these different applications, but that's what's going to give you the best effect. Now, we're all done sharpening, so I'm gonna click the Save button in the lower right corner of the interface. That's gonna bring us back over into our host software. In this case, it happens to be PhotoLab 3. And uh, in, in PhotoLab 3, because I didn't mention this before, you'll have your original raw file or whatever file format you had originally, and then your duplicated TIFF file in this case, where, where we've sharpened properly. In fact, what I would probably go and do with this image is actually rename it, saying that it's been sharpened for inkjet um, eight by 10 inches. Although I don't know if I need the eight by 10 inches part because the pixel dimension would, would tell us that. But I do want to finish with a little demonstration on using Sharpener Pro for uh, screen and web. And it's very, very similar to what we just did uh, within Sharpener Pro for output, I'm sorry, for, for inkjet. Uh, the difference is uh, what you see is what you get, right? In fact, so when you're sharpening for a print purpose, what you see on screen can oftentimes like fool you a little bit. It might look like it's over sharpened. Um, that's gonna be okay. 
uh, when when printing or sorry when when sharpening for screen purposes or for outputting to web um, what you see on screen is basically what you're going to get because the idea is you're going to be displaying the image on screen and therefore you can kind of very much trust what you're seeing on screen so uh, with that you do want to resize your image before you go into the output sharpener so in this case uh, I'm, I'm over here in Photoshop, and the way that I'm going to resize it in this case is go to the Image drop-down menu, go to Image Size, and then in Image Size, I'm just going to resize my photo for web purposes. In this case, for the website, I'm going to just go ahead and set this to 2048, 2400, or 2048 pixels long edge. That's going to be a good size for, for web purposes for the most part. Um, I'm going to leave this on bicubic again. So in Photoshop, you can also choose the interpolation process or method. Um, and if I'm going to be sharpening myself, I'm going to just see about uh, resolving my gradients. I want to, I want to, I just want to resize it. The software is going to do really good math to do that for me, and then I'm going to sharpen myself. So I'm going to click OK from there, and then I'm going to go into the output sharpener. Now I'm opening up into the output sharpener. Uh, the software recognizes that um, I'm, I have this, this smaller image. You can see that it's going to show up in the lower right corner with this little bit of metadata, it recognizes it. I'm going to go ahead and just double click to zoom in right off the bat. And actually, I was using the software earlier to kind of test to, to make sure that I had exactly what I wanted for the demonstration. And so these settings are not set to their defaults. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click on their on the default setting. And um, I'm zoomed into 100%. Let's actually zoom back out. Let's take a look at the before and after. This is at the default setting. So it's subtle, at least at this view. There's the before. There's the after. And actually, if if my image was going to be displayed at this size, um, that that would be fine. But because the possible potential of display is actually this size. I just double clicked to zoom in. This is the 100%. I, I want to be paying attention to the full resolution or the 100% zoom level um, while sharpening. So right now, if we look at this flip preview or the side by side preview, let's go side by side. On the left is the original, and on the right is in the is the enhanced. And you can see that on the right it is dramatically enhanced, it's dramatically sharpened. And that can be great, I just think it's a little bit crunchy. I think it's a little bit too much for the most part. I do like a little added bit of sharpening in some of these kinds of um, lower contrast parts that are in the waterfall, but that's sort of a, a subjective uh, conversation. It's it's entirely up to you as the, as the artist or as the creator to kind of decide where you might want to add more or less sharpening and also where you might want to add more or less sharpening globally as well. You kind of decide how much you want, right? Because in this case, we've got some water in the foreground, and I don't know if I need that to be sharpened. Although this is such a long exposure, it's probably okay if it is kind of sharpened because um, it's not really going to do anything. It's not going to add much sharpness. Um, anyways, we're in the output sharpener. We're in the upper right corner of the interface. We are sharpening for web purposes. Uh, I've got my drop-down menu set to display. And what you do is you slide your out or your adaptive sharpening slider to the point that looks good to you and your image, because of course it is going to be image dependent. If you've got a photo that's like this, that's full of these high frequency, like very sharp textures uh, with the rocks um, and the, the contrast of the, the lighting on the rocks and then all of those individual leaves and so on and so forth, um, you might uh, decide to set your adaptive sharpening in a certain way that might be very different than um, how you sharpen an image that has, uh, you know, like a foggy landscape or a photograph of some clouds or something like that. You would sharpen those in a different way. Uh, the beauty is, is this is a creative output, so you can kind of pick and choose how much you want. And in this case, I think in I like it at about 29 or 27 percent. Just to show you what I'm doing one more time, and just to, so I can see what I'm doing one more time, I'm going to click the checkbox, the preview checkbox off. So you can see the before, and then you can see the after as it turns back on. So um, one more note here. We didn't cover the creative sharpening. We did talk about control points, and they are a very important 
aspect of using Sharpener Pro as an output sharpener. And in fact, I tend to use those control points on any image that I'm sharpening for output, just in different amounts and for different reasons, uh, it's, which is totally a subjective thing, right? So your creative sharpening though, this is the output sharpening strength. And this is going to be set to 100% by default. And this slider just simply coincides with the adaptive sharpening, right? So like, let's say I wanted my adaptive sharpening up uh, to 70% throughout the whole image, right? I could then drop my output sharpening strength down to 48 or 50%. And then if I were to use control points, I could actually place a control point on something and then it's going to, this, this the control point isn't going to pay attention to the output sharpening strength slider. It is going to pay attention to the adaptive sharpening slider. So the control point, wherever I place this, it'll actually have more sharpening on it than the rest of the photo, which has you know 35% of the adaptive sharpening tool on it. I don't want that control point at all. So I'm gonna click on it and just tap the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of it. I'm gonna bring my adaptive sharpening back down to about 27 or 29%. I'll double click on the output sharpening slider, which is going to home that slider. It gets it back to its default. And then just to uh, quickly talk about structure, local contrast and focus, I would suggest that you, you play with these and adjust, see what they do. Don't be scared to bring the structure or local contrast or focus all the way up to 100% and all the way down to negative 100% to see what it does. But structure is basically a texture adjustment. What it wants to do is it, it looks uh, it looks at the image, it figures out where all the edges are, and then it basically wants to increase the texture of these areas and edges for us. I, I can kind of relate that to a combination, if you're an Adobe user, a combination of clarity and um, dehaze, probably. Maybe even their texture slider. Um, structure, we got that one. Local contrast. Local contrast, um, what it wants to do, if you're familiar with Silver Effects Pro, the Amplify Whites and the Amplify Blacks sliders, I, I relate local contrast to the Amplify Whites and Amplify Blacks slider. Uh, what it's gonna do, of course, this would typically be on a color image, just so happens that in this case, we're on a black and white photograph. Uh, the local contrast tool goes in and it finds these areas and it says, okay, here's like one single object, because it knows this because it has these the ledges around it, right? Recognizes that. And so it locally adds contrast in this area. And that local amount of contrast is gonna be separate from the amount that it adds here, or the amount that it adds in here, or the amount that it adds in the rocks, and so on and so forth. So what you get out of it is a, um, a really beautiful additional contrast area. And of course, you can utilize this uh, using control points, which is quite nice. Uh, your focus slider. So the focus slider, uh, we used that on Ellie's eyes on the last uh, demonstration. It works really, really nicely when you need to bring something that's slightly out of focus, slightly back into focus. And that's the idea of the tool. It's a proprietary algorithm. It's called focus. And the idea is that if you increase that slider, it increases focus. If you decrease that slider, it decreases, it blurs the image um, using the opposite sort of effect. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, um, we've used the adaptive sharpening. I've increased the local contrast. I'm just going to take one more quick look at the before and after. So there's the before. I'll click the preview checkbox back on. You'll see it snap to with the after. There's the after. I'm happy with this amount of sharpening, so I'm going to click the OK button in the lower right corner of the interface. And we used Photoshop in this case, so it brings us back over into Photoshop. And of course now, because I'm in Photoshop, I'm using layers. Uh, so you can see the original color image, my black and white conversion using Silver Effects Pro. I, I used one of the En Vogue presets that's built into uh, Silver Effects, and then I just changed the border around the edge. And then I used Sharpener Pro 3.0 to sharpen the image upgrades.